Have you ever been stuck charging your car at a slower speed with your portable charger even though there is a faster socket available? Simple Car Guy here and today we are checking out this Lactron Level 1 and Level 2 charger that can deliver up to 32 amps. The charger comes packaged in a hard carrying case that can be used for storing the charger while not in use or for when you take it on the road. Inside we find two swappable plug ends that can adapt the charger from Level 1 110 volt charging that maxes out at 12 amps to level 2 240 volt charging that maxes out at 32 amps. The plugs on the ends are the NEMA 515 which is the standard outlet at every home and the NEMA 1450 which were used for dryers in the past but now have become the standard for level 2 EV charging. The charger itself feels very high quality especially the charging cable so it should withstand harsh garage conditions without any issues. I did notice that there is no wall mount included, so if you wish to mount it in your garage, you would have to buy it separately. But in my case, I will be carrying this in my car as my main portable charger. Speaking of charging, let's see what the difference is between charging at level 1 and level 2 on my BMW i3. And we're charging. So at the moment it's basically 3 p.m. and it would take until 11 p.m. to fully charge this car. And we're not even that low, we are at 76%. So that's a, what, 8 hour charge? 8 hours to get 24% in. Let's switch to level 2 and see what the difference is. Okay, so we're going to switch to 240. Got our NEMA 1450 plug. Here is my 240 plug, so I'm going to connect these. Ooh. It's a hard plug to plug in, but there we go. So what's going to be the difference in charging speeds? Take a guess. Well, it's 3 p.m. right now, and if we take a look right here, it says it's going to finish charging by 5.20, so that means in Two hours and 20 minutes, we are gonna be done. So we went from over eight hours to two and a half hours, under two and a half hours. That's the difference you're gonna see between level one and level two charging. So obviously there are a lot of choices on the market and you can get a lot of different portable chargers. But what are the differences between them? Well, I have a few of them here, so let's take a look. This one came with my car, and I believe this is the OEM for BMW, the turbo cord. This does support 120 and 240 volts, so yes, it sounds pretty good. But the problem is it only supports 16 amps, so once you can't go over 16 amps. If you do, you will melt stuff in here. And, well, just look at this cable. It's all, you know, yes, it's flexible, but it's very thin. And, of course, the length is not that great on it. It's not cheap either. It costs as much as this one right here, and this one can do so much more. Now, the next one I have here is a little bit better. It has a much nicer cable. It's pretty thick. It works decent. However, it is also limited to, let's see, 16 amps. So you cannot go over 16 amps on this charger, even though it does support 240 volts. So... What makes this better? Well, obviously, we get both, right? We get the really nice, thick, durable cable. We get adapters, so we can adapt it to either 110 or 240, and more importantly, the 1450 adapter. So that means we can pull up to 32 amps, which will charge the car twice as fast as any of those chargers. Pretty cool. Of course, the car has to support it, but if it does, huge benefit. And you can carry this with you and put it basically anywhere in your car, plug it in at your friend's house if they don't have NEMA 1450, and a lot of people will have them uh, now that all the newer houses have this built in in the garage and everything else, but if they don't, you can just use one of these and charge at a you know slower speed. But yeah, this is kind of a universal charger that will do both charging speeds, level one, level two, and is pretty nicely built. It has been a few days now, and I've used this Lactron two-in-one unit to charge my car a couple of times and it has performed quite well. The portable charger allows high power charging at home at 7.7 .7 kilowatts using this NEMA 1450 plug and the flexibility of using a standard 
household socket no matter where you go. There are a few things you need to know about this unit though. This is not a smart charger, meaning that it does not have a display with a lot of information or an app that you can connect to to monitor the speed, status and other stats like that. You only get these three LEDs to indicate the status. This works well and it's clear to see even in direct light, but something to know. The cable, as I mentioned, feels very high quality and it's 21 feet long, so it should reach across the standard garage with no problems. This unit also comes with a J1772 connector, which is becoming the standard in the US. But make sure it fits your car. It will not fit cars like Nissan Leaf and you will need an adapter for a Tesla. It will also not charge at full speed if your car has an onboard charger that is less than 7.7 kilowatts. As an example, a Chevy Spark EV has an onboard charger that is only capable of 3.3 kilowatts, so it would only charge at half of the amperage this can provide. For me though, this will be the portable charger I carry in my car as it perfectly matches the max speed my BMW i3 can charge it, which is 32 amps at 240 volts or 7.7 .7 kilowatts. I hope I have answered all of your questions, but if not, leave your questions and suggestions down below and I'll be happy to address them. If you are new to EVs, why not also check out this video where I show the effects of cold weather on the range and how to avoid your winter range becoming a disaster. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.